Demon Slayer Season 1 was some of the most fun I've had with an anime in a long time. It's a beautifully animated action series with some of the most emotionally gripping moments I've ever witnessed. I loved pretty much every second of it, and the awesome characters have become some of my favorite characters in fiction. Like Inosuke, the self-proclaimed Lord of the Mountain, or Ren Goku, who managed to make me care about him enough to cry when he died, in just two hours. Needless to say, this anime is god tier, so when I got around to season 2, I had high expectations. And not only did it meet those expectations, but in a lot of ways, it surpassed what the first season accomplished. One of my personal favorite parts of this season was the setting. Season 1 kept us primarily in the mountains, with some exceptions like the Butterfly Mansion or Lady Tamiyo's Secret Home, but this arc takes us straight to the lively and festive entertainment district that's filled to the brim with bright colors and cultural symbols. It helps that our heroes have to assume the roles of average citizens, so we see firsthand what it's like to live here. This bustling city filled with large festivals and flashing lights is the perfect place to get to know Tengen as a character. This man lives and breathes the extravagant flamboyance of the entertainment district, and it was fun to see him in action. And being such a densely populated area, the stakes are even higher than before. There are too many lives at stake to just blindly charge at a demon head on, and we see the consequences of that on a number of occasions. So many people are murdered, so many homes are destroyed, and at the end of it all, the fight is so devastating that the entire district burns down. I was surprised to see them go this far with the collateral damage. Usually these types of shows reserve that for the open fields and mountain ranges where nothing monumental can be destroyed, but this show had one of its biggest landmarks be absolutely annihilated, and I respect that. While on the subject of fight scenes, let's talk about the extensive battle against Daki and Gyotaro. The build up to the fight was already pretty intense but the fight itself really proved to be one of the best fights in the whole anime from the very beginning. Like stated before, lots of innocent people lose their lives due to the senseless destruction brought down by the demons. This causes Tanjiro to act on pure bloodthirsty instinct. He gains a level of speed and power that puts him on par with Daki, but just before he could deliver a final blow, he collapses as his body can't handle how far he's pushing himself. The whole second half of the season is this constant back and forth of our heroes getting a glimmer of hope, only to be crushed by their cruel reality. It kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time, and when the demons were finally slain, the resolution was so satisfying. What follows is the saddest backstory for any demon so far. While Daki and Gyotaro are bickering over whose fault it is that they lost, Tanjiro stops them. Seeing so much of himself and his sister in these two, he tells them that no matter what happens, the only people they have are each other, so they should appreciate the time they have together. All the pain and hardship he endured because of his social status and his physical appearance made him into a cruel and violent child. But even with his cold nature, he cared for his little sister more than anything in the world. He showered her with affection and protected her at all costs. That was until the day she was brutally attacked by a vengeful samurai, who she stabbed in the eye while collecting debt. One of Muzan's minions finds them clinging on to the last remnants of life, and he gives them a second chance to live for themselves as demons. From that day forward, they sought to torment the world that caused them so much suffering. This scene was made more impactful by their journey to the afterlife. Even in death, Gyotaro loves Daki so much that he tells her to forget he ever existed and escape to heaven while he burns away in hell. But she starts to sob, telling him that she can't possibly go away without her brother by her side, protecting her, being there for her as he always was. She apologized for everything she said to him, and he lifts her up on his back one last time as they walk towards their destiny. Though they may be rotting away in the underworld, they're doing it together, and that's all that matters to them now. It's a sweet story that perfectly parallels what Tanjiro and Nezuko could have become had they taken the wrong path in life. Another brilliant moment was Nezuko's transformation. Aside from the satisfaction of Nezuko utterly crippling Daki, this scene finally addresses a common complaint about Demon Slayer. Some people have criticized the show for not making the threat of Nezuko devouring a human more prevalent. I may not agree, but this scene was still a nice touch. It would have been so easy to just have yet another moment where Nezuko is tempted by human blood and she just sits there drooling. But instead, 
we got a whole action scene where Nezuko tears everything apart trying to kill humans. Tanjiro struggles to hold her down as he's being thrown through walls, but with a bit of backhanded advice from Tengen, he puts her to sleep with a lullaby their mother sang to her. Nezuko is flooded with memories of her childhood, and that emotional longing for her family and her former life puts her to tears. It's such a beautiful moment and the perfect way to end a scene like that. Demon Slayer Season 2 is a roller coaster of emotions, and I've barely scratched the surface of what makes it so good. But I wanted to get my general thoughts out there as soon as possible, otherwise I'll never finish a video. Hopefully in future I'll have plenty more Demon Slayer videos out, so you guys can get a full understanding of what I like about this series so much. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.